Gamers are entitled. These three words alone can send legions of angry nerds into a raging spiral. This video isn't for people that only read headlines before writing in the comments about what an idiot the creator is. This is a series in which we explore the ways in which gamers, if not nerd culture as a whole, has become co-opted by an insatiable rage machine that lacks both logic and empathy towards the medium that they love. Microtransactions are piecemeal downloadable content, typically ranging anywhere from $1 to $20. This is traditionally distinguished from other DLC such as expansions due to its lack of necessity. Some games allow you to unlock this content via natural accumulation of in-game currency, albeit the grind taking a significantly higher amount of time than pulling out your wallet. Microtransactions are overwhelmingly cosmetic items that have no impact on gameplay meaning that in a multiplayer context, players will not have advantages over one another based on their willingness to spend money. I've never bought a microtransaction because I want to engage with games the way that they were intended, and I don't care much for aesthetic customizations, especially in first-person games where you can't even see yourself. I do enjoy seeing other players use them, as it creates an interesting visual palette for me to enjoy for free. Microtransactions that offer tangible advantages such as XP boosters or overpowered equipment are found in single-player games, where nobody else's experience is worsened by their existence. It's your prerogative to decide if you want to pay to change the gameplay experience away from its intended design. This isn't to say that unfair multiplayer transactions don't exist, as mobile games are infested with them. But as far as the core gaming experience is concerned, they aren't an issue. The only recent and notable AAA multiplayer release having catastrophic microtransactions that comes to mind is Battlefront 2 and people were more than justified in criticizing it. In Battlefront 2, progression was at a snail's pace, with those willing to pay for quicker access to loot boxes gaining actual passive and active abilities that made their characters statistically more powerful. People are quick to argue that empowerment microtransactions in a single player game inherently ruins the integrity of the core game design and difficulty that it makes it impossible to enjoy without the seed of doubt that the difficulty is artificially inflated in order to open players' wallets. This assertion is just plain untrue and completely disingenuous if not outright lacking knowledge of how game development works. The implementation of microtransactions comes near the absolute tail end of game development, so this wouldn't have an impact on the game's intended difficulty. One of the examples that people pointed to was Assassin's Creed Odyssey having a microtransaction page in the menu. People have stated that the game felt like a grind without paying for microtransactions, but these people have either never played the game, or were purposefully ignoring level recommendations on quests. Just like the critically acclaimed Witcher 3, main quests are often placed levels above you in order to incentivize players to engage with side quests to level up. The pacing of quests was done near identical to The Witcher 3, but people didn't complain due to its lack of microtransactions. Odyssey is ridiculously easy if you engage quests on their level. And even if the game did become hard, you could literally just lower the game difficulty in the options menu as many times as you like. If you run into a battle that's too tough, change the game to easy and then change it right back. The legions of fans that criticized Halo 5's microtransactions have also either never played the game or are outright lying. The gameplay microtransactions are completely relegated away from competitive play in the supplemental Warzone game mode, and the game already supplies you with ample materials and cooldowns. The core game is untouched by microtransactions. Even in the case of Shadow of War, with its protracted and honestly poorly paced endgame, which is required to get the true ending, this is just a case of overall bad design. It's a giant grind fest that made me drop the game and look up the ending on YouTube. Cowboy! Oh, I forgot. You're broken. I don't want to play with you anymore. The game had already reached its climax and was now demanding that I participate in an extra 10 hours of grinding in order to get the true ending. Microtransactions aren't the issue the design of the epilogue is. The fact of the matter is that microtransactions benefit the industry by giving consumers products they want, while helping fund bigger and better projects as well as free content in games. Let's put this into perspective. 
Games back in the NES and SNES days could cost upwards of $90 per cartridge due to no standardization. This at face value is already more than the $60 standard that we enjoy nowadays, but when you account for inflation, that $90 gets closer to $150. Count on top of that, the powerful consoles that we have now are actually cheaper than their predecessors. Contemporary games are objectively bigger in scale than they've ever been, brimming to the top with countless hours of content to play. We are getting bigger and arguably better games than previous generations for a fraction of the cost. But what exactly does this mean for the health of the industry? And I can already hear people saying that this is not their concern, but this is an incredibly short-sighted mindset to have. Video game production costs are higher than they've ever been, with hundreds of employees over years-long development times making less money comparatively than a couple of guys in a spare bedroom. This is counterweighted by developers having to sell an absurd amount of copies of their games, which means dumbing their creations down in order to appeal to the mainstream audience. The utilization of microtransactions allows for developers to keep their studios afloat, while heightening production values and creating free content for players. Look at Fortnite, Apex Legends, and Warframe. These are amazing games for an entry fee of zero dollars. I've enjoyed countless hours of these games without ever having to spend a penny. It's basically a community service that the developers are doing. These kinds of games open the floodgates for all kinds of gamers that were nervous about putting their toes in the water or come from poor socioeconomic backgrounds. This wouldn't be possible without microtransactions. If whales, people who spend huge amounts of money on microtransactions, are able to support these games, more power to them. I bought Siege for $20 years ago, and I continue to get free content for it because other people buy microtransactions. On top of this, microtransactions help individual devs, as it ensures artists stay on board between projects, as well as not having to rely on layoffs in order to fix financial woes. Let's segue into the gamers are entitled part of the video. Blindly hating microtransactions has become a meme that's been perpetuated by YouTubers such as Angry Joe, Total Biscuit, Boogie2988, and Yogg Yeah. This isn't to say that there aren't legitimate causes for concern, as I've noted previously, but think of how people resoundingly hate Nickelback not because they've listened to the music, but because the internet told them that it's funny to blindly hate them. Your average gamer hates the very mention of the word microtransaction because that's what the internet rage machine dictates. But have they actually applied any critical thought as to why? And how can they avoid them while highlighting egregious practices such as Battlefront 2? Alongside the aforementioned reasons I gave, the simplest solution you can make as a consumer to avoid microtransactions is to just not buy them. They are optional. This is Capitalism 101. If a product is offered that you deem worth your money, you buy it. If you don't want to, then you do not have to. If you buy them, you only have yourself to blame. Buying the product and then complaining about it to EA doesn't solve the issue. Don't buy it in the first place. I'm not a corporate apologist. I'm simply advocating that people think rationally instead of succumbing to the latest hate meme on the internet. You're an empowered consumer, so speak with your wallet. But don't limit the health of the industry when all it's doing is offering additional products that people have deemed worth their time and money. The people who demand that companies take away opportunities to create a healthier industry are entitled. They want the industry to cater to them regardless of the benefits microtransactions bring. They complain about buying products that they want and then resent the developer for it. If you're somebody like me who doesn't like purchasing microtransactions, I have a solution for you. Don't buy them. I've purposefully left some points out of this video due to length concerns, so if you feel like I need to address anything else, by all means leave a comment and I'll be more than happy to discuss it with you. Make sure to like, subscribe, comment, and follow me on Twitter. Thank you.